I've officially been a pen tester for over a decade now. Here are 10 lessons that I've learned in the past 10 years as a cybersecurity professional. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. Let's get right into it. All right, so the first lesson that I learned is that cybersecurity is an infinite game. And this is something that I see professionals in the field, other content creators and stuff like that as well, where I can tell they still haven't grasped this. They still haven't picked up on this. To me, this was something that I stumbled upon early on. And it was something that I did correctly without even knowing just how beneficial that it was. Now that I've mentored hundreds of, of students throughout the years, I've noticed a very common pattern and it's that the people that are just in a rush to make a quick buck or get a quick remote job, maybe this is you, but if your only motivation is that and you don't care about the skill set and you just want to get some kind of end result, then it actually makes things significantly more difficult. And what I found is that most students fall into that camp or are usually unsuccessful. Uh, one of the things that I did right early on was that uh, I was just learning and, and getting curious about stuff and tinkering. And I didn't realize at the time just how far that can go because the compound effect is very real. You might learn just one tiny little thing each day, but over a period of time that will compound on top of itself and you'll find that you have actually learned a significant amount. When you can focus on learning the things that you enjoy and enjoying the process, as cliche as it sounds, that is actually one of the keys to success in cybersecurity long term. Now, even though you know I, I live in, in Bangkok and I, I run my own business doing pen testing and mentoring people and I don't work for a nine to five anymore, I'm still learning cybersecurity because I do view it as an infinite game. The point of cybersecurity is to stay in cybersecurity, is to keep learning, is to keep leveling up. I know this is easier said than done for some people, but if you can really lean into the curiosity, start tinkering around and don't worry so much about the end result and focus instead on the process and enjoying that, then as a result, the success will come. Point number two is gonna shock a lot of people. And unless you're in the field or you've worked in the field, you're probably not gonna believe me anyway. So to you guys, I'll just say, hey, land your job, then circle back to me and, and see if you agree or not. And that is that most people in this field are extremely green. They're extremely beginner to the point that it is not uncommon. I've seen this multiple times where people in cybersecurity never heard of Kali Linux before. In fact, in my first job, most people on my team, out of the 13 pen testers on the team, only two people, only two other people even heard of Kali Linux before. This was on the pen testing team at a Fortune 100 company, by the way. So just understand that, you know, when you're looking online, you're seeing all these elite hackers on X uh, posting all these like zero days and stuff like that. Understand that you are looking at a tiny, tiny minority of people, most people in cybersecurity, because cybersecurity is huge. Almost every company has cybersecurity teams nowadays, or they outsource a team. So there's a lot of people in cyber. Most of these people are nowhere near that level. They're extremely green. The third lesson that I've learned in the past decade is to not ever take job requirements seriously. Job requirements are suggestions. And the way that I was introduced to this was that I just kept getting reached out to by recruiters on LinkedIn and they were saying, hey, I think you'd be a great fit for this pen testing role. And I would take a look at the job requirements because they would make me, you know, as a formality, I had to fill out an official application, but they're like, hey, you got this interview lined up anyways, just fill this out for our records. And I looked at it and I was like, wow, I can't believe that they recommended me for this because I don't even meet half of the requirements on here. And moreover, what I found was that after I went through the interview process and landed the job at these places, almost in every case, I looked around and no one had a lot of the certs they were mentioning on there. For example, I would see OSCP listed time and time again, and this was before I had OSCP, and I found that Oh wow, no one at the company even has OSCP. <laughs> so I really was introduced firsthand that it really is not to be taken seriously. And I think a lot of people stumble over this and they won't apply to these jobs, which is why, little tip, little trick for you guys, apply to the jobs that are not labeled as entry level, as long as it's not a senior level role, because less people will apply to them because they'll see the requirements, think they don't meet them, and not even try. And number four is that imposter syndrome is bullshit. This is something that so many people in this field struggle with. Other content creators as well in the field, they struggle with this. And I think the solution to this, and really why this stems, where, where this comes from, is the fact that you care too much. And it's good that you care. It's good that you care about your skill set and you care about providing value. And I think that's really important. You need to realize what is important to care about and what is not. Because like it or not, it is impossible 
for us to know everything. No one can know everything in cybersecurity. And you have to understand that when you look around on the internet, you're seeing the highlights of people's lives. You're seeing the best of the best as well, right? You're seeing a small subset of the population when we're talking about zero days and things like that. And even looking at those zero days, you're only seeing the end result. You're not seeing all the work that went into that person finding the zero day and things like that. That person that figured out the super elite zero day that's super hard to exploit, well, that same person, while they might be super skilled in that niche area, they might know nothing about, like, say, web pen testing or something like that. You might be, as a beginner, you might know more web pen testing than they do. So all that is to say, each of us will have our own strengths and weaknesses, and instead of being so caught up in what other people are doing, you need to really just trust in yourself and focus on what you're doing, right? It's cool to see what other people are doing, get inspiration from that, but you need to really caution yourself against comparing yourself to someone else because at the end of the day, we're always comparing apples to oranges because we all have different backgrounds. We come into this field from different areas. You know, maybe someone's super elite at finding web vulnerabilities because they were a software developer developing web applications for a decade or something, and then they got into pen testing. Well, yeah, of course, they're going to be more skilled than you in that area. So really, you got to understand what your strengths are and lean into those don't worry about comparing yourself to others so much and the next thing is that soft skills are a superpower especially in the tech fields because you have so many super brilliant people that are just terrible to work with they just have like the worst personality you know the driest personality as well maybe they they just lack social skills entirely that's a very common thing and just to give you a little a funny story behind this uh, when I was working a government job I remember we had these weekly stand-up meetings where they would go we'd all have to turn on our webcams and you know you know, it would be like a big cybersecurity org wide meeting. And this was back in the, the virus work from home uh, phase of, of working, right? So we're all working from home, you know, taking calls over Zoom. What I would do every day is, you know, even though I would be wearing my boxers, I would just throw a blazer on top of my shirt and sit in a position, position myself where the, the lighting is hitting me perfectly. So it, it was like the best optics. I, I would do this every time just because um, I know that the importance of your image it's really important. It might sound stupid. It might sound BS, but how you you know you come across, how you how you dress, how you look, how you sound, all of this factors in uh, as well. And so me understanding the you know psychology, human psychology, and I went through a phase as well where I was really focused on dating and developing my social skills. All these things factor in. So even things that might seemingly be unrelated, you know, if you can develop yourself socially, that's going to help you immensely no matter what field you're in because you're dealing with people at the end of the day. But anyhow, I would come into the meetings like this and I remember there was another guy on my team that was actually super skilled. This guy was like, he was like finding zero days and all this stuff, but he had the worst optics. He actually, you know, he didn't speak up and uh, his camera quality and mic quality were terrible. And I remember the director of the cybersecurity team got so mad at this guy, he called him out. He wanted to fire this guy. He, he was really angry at this guy. He thought the guy was completely incompetent because of how he presented himself. And later he found out, wait, actually this guy is super skilled. Whereas me, yeah, I was doing a great job at the company, uh, but because he saw you know, how I was dressed and how I presented myself, I remember one time I was talking, he cut me off and he said, hey, excuse me, I just want to interrupt you for a second. Every time I see you on the camera, you're just absolutely shining. And he was like, you're always dressed sharp and blah, 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 blah. So that image that I, you know, even though you might call it phony or whatever, that actually went a long way for me at the company. That's just a small thing. Always think about optics and always consider the soft skills, especially when you're working amongst teams, dealing with people in a polite and respectful way as well. And if you don't have this skill, this is a skill that you can develop as well, but it is very important and not enough people in the field talk about this skill because let's be honest, there's a lot of people that really lack in this area in the field. So if you're looking for an edge, if you have some social skills or you can develop them, that can be a great edge in this field. And point number six, and this is a mindset that has really helped me that actually OSCP taught me, is that if I fail, it will not be because I didn't try. There were so many times where, you know, if you guys have been following me since the early days of the channel, I started this as an OSCP vlog channel, just sharing my experience going for the OSCP. And the reason it took me so many years in order to get that was that I was afraid to try and fail. And so many of you might be afraid to apply and fail, maybe afraid to try to learn cyber because you're afraid you're gonna fail. So you're like, well, if I don't fail, then I can say, well, if I really tried, I would have done it, but you know, I didn't try, right? I eventually caught myself doing that. And I said, you know what, from now on, if I fail, it's gonna be because I tried and failed, not because I didn't try. No more hiding behind this BS that, oh, if I tried, I could do it, right? So I really put myself to the test. Once I really stood firm on that and my mindset is when I was able to get the OSCP because I actually tried. So many people are not actually trying. So while a lot of people are complaining, oh, the job market's so bad, it's so hard to get a job. Remember that most of those people are not even trying and they're gonna say, well, if I really tried, I could. So if you are trying, if you're actually out there trying, 
then you're ahead of so many people. The next thing that I've realized is that your first pen testing job will probably be your worst in terms of like the working conditions, your coworkers and things like that. So at my first pen testing job, and this is the case with a lot of my students that I've helped get jobs as well, uh, they've confirmed this, is uh, it's usually some variation of uh, verifying uh, the findings on a bunch of scanners like DAST and SAS scanners and things like that. So dynamic code and static code assessments and they're coming with vulnerabilities and you gotta confirm if it's a false positive or not and then maybe you do a little bit of web pen testing because most companies have a ton of websites that need to be tested. That's about it. It's not the most fun, <laughs> especially compared to what I was doing uh, in my days of like you know, senior pen testing now, that was where I started. And that's where a lot of people are gonna start. So if you're in a, maybe you just landed a role in pen testing right now and you're rethinking, you're like, was this worth it for me? This kind of sucks. I don't know if pen testing is really what I wanted and it sucks because I sank all this time into it and now I don't know. Just understand that your first pen testing job will be your worst. And actually, when I worked for Dell as a senior pen tester, the conditions were so much better in the fact that I had access to premium hack the box, you know, all the private, you know, pro labs and stuff like that. I had a subscription to Learn Unlimited through OSCP. I could get any training that I wanted paid for. Now, I think things are a little different at Dell right now because they're like squeezing everyone so tight, forcing them in the office, and they cut the budget tremendously on cybersecurity. Uh, so I don't think that's the case even there anymore. But my point is, as you continue to level up, you will get better working conditions. That's why the channel is called Elevate Cyber. Let's all keep elevating our skill sets to get those better jobs. And inadvertently, I learned the eighth lesson, and that is that teaching is the most thorough way to learn something. As I began mentoring students, creating these videos on YouTube, especially the technical ones, is when it really forced me to learn stuff. Because when you teach something to someone else, it will expose every gap in your knowledge because you might think you know something well, but until you have to put it together in a formalized learning plan or a video or a blog, blog or something like that and explain it to another person, it, you really begin to realize where there are gaps in your knowledge. So even if you don't have a YouTube channel, I'm not saying everyone has to be a YouTuber, find a way to teach that to someone. Maybe you just teach it to a friend. Maybe you start a blog post. You know, that would be a good way to get something that you could show tangibly to an employer. Have something and that's really going to help you learn this stuff so much more thoroughly. And I have a feeling that lesson number nine is going to ruffle a lot of people's feathers, but I really believe this to be true in that most CTFs are more difficult than pen tests in a nine to five job, especially when it comes to internal companies. I've always worked on internal pen testing teams. Maybe if you're on an external team, that could be a little bit different, but for internal pen testing teams, CTFs are, are generally harder. There's two types of pen tests that you might get internally. Number one is the brand new environment that's never been pen tested before. And those are always a lot of fun because you can find so many vulnerabilities so easy. You wouldn't believe the vulnerabilities that I found in Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies, US government. You would think these places are so secure. That is not the case. A lot of times, the vulnerabilities that I found in those environments would be, if, if they were a hack the box machine, it would be easy. It would be easy of the easy boxes, right? They might not even put it on hack the box because it was so simple to, to exploit. I remember at, at some of the Fortune 100 companies, that I, at multiple actually, that I worked at, they stopped doing red team engagements because it was not fair to the blue team. They were just beating the tar out of the blue team so badly that they weren't getting value out of it anymore. So they said, hey, we need to shift to purple teaming because red teaming is just like, it's humiliating. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is actual, the reality. A lot of these companies are not even ready for red teaming yet, which is also why it's a little harder to get in as a red teamer for beginners and things like that. Definitely pen test is more high in demand, uh, I would say. Um, there's more jobs out there for that. But red teaming, once you have some experience in pen testing, you can find the companies that, that are hiring and that you know, teams would get value from, but that's a whole side tangent there. But that is the reality. Most CTFs have been a lot harder. And the 10th lesson that I learned is that pen testing and offensive cybersecurity in general is so much more than just a nine to five job. When I was first starting out, I had to target the nine to five. And if you are, I think that is the right path for you as well. But long term, and I didn't know this going in, I found this out later, long term, there's a lot of things that you can do with pen testing as a skill set with offensive security as a skill set that's not necessarily a nine to five job. There's contract work you can do. Uh, you can dive into exploit development. You don't even have to work for a company in order to do vulnerability research, find exploits, submit bugs. Uh, you could do a whole number of things. You know, you could even create um, some cybersecurity defensive products. You could become a cybersecurity vendor. You could sell cybersecurity products on the sales side. There's so many things that you could do outside of the traditional nine to five. But if you want to work nine to fives forever, you can also 
also do that as well. And you never, the beauty of it as well, you never have to go into management if you don't want to. Personally, I never wanted to, and I never had to. That is the amazingness of this field. And you know, what do you guys think? Are there any key lessons that maybe I missed out on? Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you have any questions on any of these, also feel free to drop that in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video.